being absolutely comprehensive, we have to look at this, and you can think of this as all those poor Canadians that live within 25 miles of the U.S. border. <laughs> Must be kind of boring for them. However, it does snake down into data there. And it does do all of this 48 states plus I think some of Alaska and Hawaii and it doesn't touch Canada more than the border here but up by the Great Lakes and further east we need it so there's no point in not having it and who knows maybe we'll see an energy beam come through here And in case you couldn't hear me on British Columbia's video, um, I like them. The place and the people. I wanted to live there. But I may have to do that over again because, oops, that was kind of cool. That was cool. Perhaps for everyone's benefit, I'll put one star on this and three stars on the other, so everyone knows I don't really recommend watching this one. Though I don't recommend not watching it also. It's just not horribly exciting. There's not much for me to show. But who knows where the clues may be. A scientist must have objectified and complete data sets. Oh, 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 that's interesting. Overlapping circles. That's interesting. We're getting parallel cosmic bullets. Those cosmic bullets are always polarized across the entire country going in a given direction, and yet they change so much that I have to wonder if they're not coming from the sun or some other galactic source. And or a satellite. But if it's a satellite, then I think it's a low orbiting satellite because a geostationary satellite at 22,000 miles high, you'd always point it in the same direction and therefore whether these cosmic bullets are going up or down, um, they wouldn't change. But I haven't measured very carefully. And with the degree of data that I'm putting out here, we ought to be able to vector in. And going across the 2,800 mile continent of North America, there probably would be a measurable vector differential um, that would tell us whether it was a low or a high orbit or something so far away that it was beyond the moon. And we better figure that out because it's only... Oh, well, we're done because the moon's only 225,000 miles away or so and that silly comet that's coming in a month or so is 200,000 miles across which means it could have a hard time squeaking between us. I'll be back in a flash.